comes to 2023, I've also noticed a huge trend going on with the artists right now. Big time yeah. artists, they are selling off their music catalogs at an alarming rate. This IP, we can talk about the intellectual property of publishing rights and masters and owning your music. That's how artists have power. When you get signed to a label, they might work out certain terms to the deal where you don't own that stuff. And that's where the money is made. So just this past year alone, I'm just gonna name off a few, okay? Yeah. Bruce Springsteen, he sold his catalog for 500 million. Bob Dylan, over 200 million. Dr. Dre sold his for 200 million. Justin Bieber just sold his catalog for 200 million. Phil Collins, over 300 million. And right now, Michael Jackson's catalog, some of it, not even the whole thing, just like half of it, is on the market for a half a billion dollars right now. Half so a billion. So another 500 million. Yeah. But Springsteen is 500 million as well. He was, yeah. So yeah, half yeah. a billion. But that was all of, that was all of Springsteen's catalog. This is okay, only half, half of, of my, mile. okay. Yeah, so, so just for fun, I did the map on Justin Bieber's catalog. I know it's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm blonde. I shouldn't do this, but hey, I did it anyway. It. I did it anyway. Now, Justin Bieber sold 290 songs. Okay. 200, I say his entire catalog. I would say that. I didn't even know he had 290 well, songs I'm published. I'm sure he's okay, written yeah. for other artists yeah, sure, and, sure, and, sure. and collaborations, yeah. whatever. He had 290 songs that he sold for 200 million, right? Now that's $690,000 per song. That's great. That is great for you and me. That's fantastic. That's one house per song. I'll take it. But... Is this actually a good deal for Justin Bieber? He's so young. Why would he yeah. sell 100% of his rights so early on in his career? Digging more into this because it is truly a trend an epidemic if you want to, to know. So many artists are letting it go and I, it makes me wonder why because that's where the money is held. I wanted to talk more about these cash cows known as the catalog, right? I'm curious again, why? Now, older artists make sense. Bruce oh, Springsteen, Springsteen sure. Dylan, Phil absolutely. Collins, absolutely. Because now you're talking about generational, multi generational wealth sitting in okay. assets right. for your family. That's again significant. Again, yeah. the argument is though, like you could leave them the rights to that music. They can be the estate holders it will, of it, and then they have. The only thing with that is typically with royalties for music, the older the song gets, the less it gets played. Mm. The less money, the less royalties it accrues. Got it. Got it. Unless it gets so, synced somewhere. Right? Yeah, yeah, but the, the, That's a the lot chances of, of old classic songs, older classic songs getting synced is a lot less, mm -hmm. actually, than newer material. Because a lot of the old catalogs charge, those publishing companies that hold the rights to that music, they charge a high ticket dollar amount for that. So if you want to sync a Led Zeppelin song or a Pink Floyd song or a Michael Jackson song, you're talking about a lot of yeah. money. Yeah. Whereas if you go with a newer artist, then you don't have to pay as much. Here's something from Rolling Stone. First, and they're saying, first, why are buyers buying? And this is what interests me. Heavily disrupting the way the industry operates, okay? There's certain funds. There's, so the publishing rights usually stay with the publishers in this, okay? The recorded rights belong to the labels and the performers. Everybody's got a piece of the pie. Yeah, so yeah. a master recording means the actual sound recording of that. They, back in the day, they used to call it master because it was a disc and that was the master disc where they would that press a bunch from. of other ones from. Right. So that recording, those recording rights, are owned by the record label and the artist, the performer. But in the past few months alone, these two upstart companies, Hypnosis Songs Fund and Primary Wave, have snapped up such rights related to artists, including Fleetwood Mac, Neil Young, Shakira, John Lennon, Dire Straits, and so yeah. many more. By acquiring music rights, these companies, and this is it, can reap m the money from the royalties, licensing, brand deals, and other revenue sources that would have gone to the artist. Now, would have gone to the artist. So why does the why is the artist incentivized then? Why well, are they selling out right now? These two funds, this the hypnosis yeah. and primary two they, bigger buyers. Yeah. Yeah, they could be making like deals that you can't refuse to the artist. If somebody offered you two hundred million dollars, that's a lot of money. It's hard to turn down. But again, or it comes back to the intellectual property. Right. This is what we make as artists. We're making something out of nothing. Out of pure air, we've created something. And it becomes valuable. Mm. And we, the question is, so Future, he's yeah. a rapper. So maybe, maybe you don't know. Future, the rapper, sold oh, his yeah, catalog yeah. for $75 million. I thought, that is so cheap. 
I feel like that is Yeah, such but a... he's not a household name like Jay-Z. Okay, so this is the argument. He made all his money already on these songs. He already made the money that he could make from these songs is one argument, right? right? So then he went ahead and made Plus another, another 75, 75 on top. So he can go and create something else or go invest in something else. Maybe he's going to become a real estate mogul. Who knows? He can take the 75 and... It's kind of it's like ridiculous. getting paid double, right? Yeah, it's ridiculous. So, on one hand, I can see how attractive it is to go with it. It'd yeah. be very hard to turn down $200 million, absolutely. But now let's talk about taxes. Yeah? yeah. Okay, because yeah, legit, yeah. The, my questions were, so what songs are included in these deals? What are the taxes? Like, and are mm -hmm. certain songs worth more than others? Like, how do they actually itemize this sale? And looking at it, so in 2021... Five billion dollars was spent in acquiring music acquisitions, okay? Mm -hmm. That's a lot. And I was wondering, again, what's the deal? Why is it that way? The surge, this is what they say, the surge of purchasing, maybe in part because it is believed that recorded music is somewhat of recession-proof. Proof, right. Did you hear that? Recession-proof. Recession ding, ding. The closing bell. I mean... Reset That's now, it. you can attest to this because when the pandemic did hit and everything shut down, we can say the P word now, it's okay. Everything shut down. The only thing that kept you and your family afloat would be your royalties that royalties. came in. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I mean, nothing yeah. else was coming in. So yeah. that is where, again, back to that IP and holding your little treasure Intellectual trove. Intellectual property, baby. Like, oh, it's a good idea. Do you cash in now? Do you take that lump sum of that lottery ticket, just the right. half, or do you take it over 30 years? This is the conundrum that... Is. And for the artists and songwriters, there are tax benefits. Yes, so, there are. Okay. 2005, yeah. okay? An amendment to the copyright law allows that musical okay. assets be treated as capital assets rather than goods in inventory. Right. So let me break that down break a little down. bit. What does that mean? It means that you can buy and sell these publishing rights for a taxation of only 15 to 20% mm -hmm. capital gains tax rather than a much higher ordinary income tax. So now they get to keep more money than have it be taxed. So if we're mm -hmm. talking about tax returns in over, over 10 years time, what did these songs mm -hmm. make? What were they taxed on? Okay, now it's starting to come clear. So your intellectual property, this is what's gonna keep giving you money. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. So musicians, if you think oh, I'm just a guitar player, I'm just a drummer, I'm just a keyboard player, I don't care what it is. The point is you have to create as much music as you can. As much IP. And as much IP and get it out there into the ether, into the universe, into cyberspace, get it published and make sure it's being broadcast on all different types of platforms so that way you can generate income from that for the long haul. A good example, actually, Nomad has a few sample loop libraries, yeah. sample packs, and there's been many times where people have sought you out through yes. your sample packs and going beyond the mic or going beyond your instrument is something yeah. that I really want to preach to all the musicians and creatives mm -hmm. out there because you might be really good at one thing and that's your niche and that's great, but don't close yourself off to the spirit of other possibilities and opportunities yeah. that might be out there that do... That's right tag on to your talents. For me, I'm a singer-songwriter. I'm a musician at heart, as in sense I'm a singer-songwriter. I don't right. play as well as I'd like to, but I've discovered my love of hosting, for example, right. and I was able to step I'm out. camera personality. And being on stage all my life was, it made it okay to talk in front of, have a microphone in my hand and talk in front of 65,000. 65, Just 65,000.